joining us. My name is Daryl Morin here at Advanced Wireless and we'd like to welcome you to this week's sneak peek. Today we're going to be um, reviewing uh, the AP7502 uh, wall plate access point um, produced by Zebra Technologies, formerly known as Motorola Solutions, and is part of uh, Zebra's second generation of 802.11 AC access points. Previously, we reviewed the AP7522 and 32, and as I mentioned today, today we're going to go ahead and preview the 7502. So this is the packaging. It comes in nothing, uh, nothing uh, spectacular there. However, when you open up the box, you're going to find um, what uh, Zebra is claiming to be the world's smallest dual radio 802.11 AC access point. Pull this out here. And not only is he an access point, what's going to... Uh, surprised you as it did me was how small it is but in addition to having a 2.4 gigahertz radio and 5 gigahertz 802.11 AC radio in here is that it also provides you with uh, three um, 10 by 100 ethernet ports it is a regular th uh, three port ethernet switch that's in here so you can make them in access mode or truck mode as well and the third one, you can actually uh, provide PoE depending on the level of power that you're providing the access point. And there's also a very handy fourth port, pass-through port here. So if I'm looking to mount him to a wall and there's a phone line there, for instance, I can also pass that fourth, uh, that phone line through the access point so I don't require any additional rewiring. If I go a little bit further, lift up uh, some of the other things and see the rest of the contents in the box. Uh, I'm going to find that I have a nice little face plate that I can put over it once again to hide any um, part of the mounting plate that may be exposed depending on the type of wall connector you have, as well as what they're claiming to be um, their universal mounting pl uh, plate here. And this is supposed to fit on all standard um, outlets both in the U.S. as well as ASA PAC and EMEA, so the European nations too. And uh, I'll take you through that process here in a little bit, but uh, we agree with their assessment. If you have a standard wall outlet, you should be able to install this access point in under 90 seconds. So with that being started, uh, stated, let's go ahead and review once again some of the common characteristics that we're finding in this line of uh, access points. So like the 7522 and 7532, this does run uh, the Wing 5.x code, or operating system, from Zebra, as I mentioned before, uh, formerly uh, Motorola Solutions. So each one of these is an intelligent device, meaning uh, there is a version of the controller code running in here. So he doesn't need to forward all of his data off to a controller somewhere. Um, he gets configured and managed by a management device, but he has the smarts to do everything he needs to here. Um, so he is site survivable, meaning that if he is being managed by uh, a manager somewhere either in the facility or across the country or somewhere across the globe, should communications go on, he will continue to offer 100%, and let me, let me highlight that, 100% of his capabilities will remain intact. Uh, you'll find with uh, many other manufacturers that their ability to roam if there's an authenticated client will be severely inhibited or other security and QoS features will be disabled. So you do not uh, pay that penalty with the Wing 5 device. He is mesh enabled, that's something that comes standard in the Wing OS, so every access point that you purchase actually can be a mesh access point as well. Um, they can be controllers, each access point can be a manager of up to 24 other APs including themselves. So if I have a building for instance and it's a single location and I have less than 24 or 25 APs that I need, uh, all we need to do is actually put one in, in manager mode and he can manage the others without any other equipment or licensing being needed. That just comes standard uh, built in. So uh, he can also serve as an off domain manager any one of these three access points. So if I do have a centralized manager somewhere, all of the things we're going to talk about, like Smart RF that does automatic channel and power control uh, and firmware distribution and WIP sensing uh, can actually be managed by any one of the access points at the local location. And the reason uh, Zebra went ahead and designed it that way is to minimize the number of data points that you need to talk back with uh, the manager, reducing um, uh, the throughput or requirements, the bandwidth, to less than 1 to 2 KB 
per location, which can be relatively significant um, when you compare it to others where if you have 100 or 200 access points to the location, uh, you're going to be consuming a tremendous amount of bandwidth there. So uh, I mentioned before, they can do smart or rough, which means dynamic channel assignment or allotment and uh, power control on the radio, wireless intrusion prevention built right in here. Um, the captive portal, so if you're interested in running hotspots, etc., that can actually run right on the access point as well. Um, the server, the welcome page, or if you wanted to redirect to a page that you already have set up, it can do that. In addition, they have an internal DHCP and radius server, so very, very smart. Uh, device, uh, and it needs to be if you, they're going to follow up on their claim of being 100% site survivable. Now, I do get this question quite often. If I'm authenticating to a hotspot on this AP, what happens when I go and I roam on to my next AP? Well, the, once again, they're very smart. So once you are credentialed and authenticated on one AP, it automatically notifies its brothers and sisters at, the lo at that same location that you're authenticated. So once again, there's no impact on roaming performance. Uh, has a built-in layer 2 through layer 7 firewall so if somebody picks up something at home and either intentionally or unintentionally uh, starts a denial of service attack on your um, on your network in the days of old uh, all that data would go to a controller somewhere and would get stopped at the controller but as I'm sure many of you found out that still puts tremendous burden as all those packets are being sent through your network to that controller before it stopped uh, with the Wing OS, with that built-in Layer 2 through Layer 7 stateful firewall, it will actually get stopped at the radio because that firewall is not only on the wired connections, it's on the wireless as well. So it will say, hey, there's something going on here, and stop the packets there and forward off an alarm so that th that traffic, those packets, will never touch your wired network. So very, very smart. And of course, since he is local, uh, locally managed, or I should say remotely managed, but um, has intelligence of a controller, he can put QoS tags on right there at the radio. So as soon as it hits your network, once again, it doesn't have to go to the controller to get QoS. It'll put those tags on there uh, right here locally. So uh, that's the true for the 7502, 22, and 32. And here's, once again, I'm not going to spend too much time on the 32 or the 7522 because we covered those before, but we'll jump right in once again to the specifics on the 7502, what makes them unique. So uh, the pack that much in here, he is running um, a 2.4 gigahertz radio that can go up to 300 megabits per second, and he's got a second 5 gigahertz 802.11 AC radio that uh, supports 2x2 MIMO with two, uh, with two spatial streams. So when you're going to see MIMO, it's very easy to get confused. Uh, the first two and the second two, the 2x2, two two just tells you how many antennas are being used for transmit and then receive. But almost more important is the number of spatial streams that support it. So with this AP, it's two. Now it is backward compatible. Most tablets these days, phones, etc., are you going to find our, our use, utilize a lower cost radio and can only support one spatial stream. So he can support that, but all the way go, go all the way up to two. He can uh, handle uh, channel bandwidth assignments of 20, 40, and 80 uh, megahertz in width. He does do, because it's part of the standard, transmit beam forming, but they do also put a little special sauce in there in, in addition. So we typically see better coverage or greater coverage at a higher data rate with the Zebra product. Um, he's designed now, being that he's a wall plate, he's designed to be provide coverage in a single room. So you're going to find this used heavily on college campuses and dormitories or in schools, in classrooms, uh, hotels, uh, restaurants, uh, that kind of setting. So he's rated to handle up to 64 uh, client devices uh, speaking through him, but our expectations are about 40 with some relatively uh, devices with relatively heavy traffic going through him. That will be the threshold 40 to 45 right in there. Uh, he also has, everybody's been hearing of the Internet of Things, and, and it's gotten a lot of marketing buzz, but a lot of people are really unclear of, of what that means, the Internet of Things, or IoT. Well, it's, it means being able to manage and track and allocate, uh, whether it be your products, whether it be your equipment, or whether it be people. Um, throughout your enterprise. So what they've gone ahead and doing, like you're starting to see in a number of their other products, they're actually starting to put sensors uh, in addition in their access points. So you're going to find that he also has um, a single Bluetooth LE, or stands for low energy transceiver in him. So if you have a need to track um, uh, people or equipment or assets, uh, you can do that through here. A lot of folks have uh, carry smartphones these days, 
those smartphones do have Bluetooth radios in them. So if you want to use Wi-Fi, you can generally say, okay, I know that person is connected to this access point and these other access points can see them. But if you really want to get up close and personal, um, that's when you need that Bluetooth LE technology, uh, hearing beacons in the phones. And generally that can get us into about a three to five foot area. So you place one of these next to a door in a classroom and you know the, you, you have students signed up to, to participate in the program, you'll know when that phone or when that student is in that classroom or when that customer is in that, um, that restaurant booth or when uh, somebody is coming by and is at that working process station, et cetera. So they're once again making these products really uh, to take advantage of IoT and the really exciting analytics that they have coming out as well. So he can be powered by 802.3 AF power. Uh, he uses about six and a half. So if you give him AF uh, PoE power, which is around 15 um, watts, he's going to be able to get whatever's remaining out that one PoE port right here. If you give him AT power, which goes up to about 30 watts, he'll be able to give you full 15 watts of AF power out that port as well. So once again, you can drive him using PoE, but if you give him enough, he can give what remains out that PoE power uh, port. So if you have a voice over IP phone or video camera or other PoE device, um, just look at what its power requirements are and chances are as long as you give him enough juice he'll be able to power that device as well. So when we look at the ports I mentioned before we have the three port ethernet switch here which goes 10 by 100 uh, and the one pass through port. If I turn them on the back though I'm going to see I have my 10 by 100 by 1000 giggy port back here that I would plug into my network and then here's that pass through port once again as I mentioned uh, using the illustration of having uh, a phone line there that you can simply plug through here and everything that goes through there will come out this port as well. You're going to find that he also has a, a power supply um, input right here as well. Um, we don't really see that as being all that useful in, in only the most unique of situations. And one caveat is if you do use AC power plugged directly in here, you will not be able to drive the PoE. Uh, port. Uh, you'll get data through there, but he will not be able to provide PoE, which is somewhat of a little bit of a, of a shock for us as well. I mentioned to you the universal mounting bracket too. Uh, once again, just take off the faceplate, take out the screws, put those screws back on here, and you'll find this clicks and locks in place, and there's also a special locking screw right here. We typically find it takes about 60 to 90 seconds, as long as you have a screwdriver with you. Um, it will make that very, very easy. And uh, to illustrate that further, um, here's just a little diagram. Uh, you'll see the faceplate, remove it, you screw on the universal mounting plate, uh, plug in the network cable and pass-through cable, snap it on, lock it down, and you are good to go. So, once again, that covers our sneak peek of the 7502. Uh, in an upcoming sneak peek, we're going to be talking about Wing Express. Uh, that is an enterprise that utilizes the same devices, enterprise technology. Uh, is available on the 7522, 7502, and a couple of the 802.11n products as well uh, with a strictly GUI interface for basic configurations, etc., but at a lower price point. So once again, this is Daryl Morin at Advanced Wireless. I want to thank you for joining us today. If you have any questions or would like to learn more, please feel free to run by our website at www.awimobility.com or call us at 888-238-9473, extension 103. Thank you once again. Look forward to seeing you soon.